There's always been scandal, crimes and sex in politics, but Silvio Berlusconi was the man who made it his own, doused it in fake tan and wrapped it in a bandana. He dominated Italian life for decades, redefining the centre-right and reinventing the populism we see today. Born into a well-off Milan family, Berlusconi was a cruise ship crooner turned construction tycoon, but he really found his tune in the world of television. His company, Fininvest, was a commercial TV empire that opened up Italians to the world of cable channels, and it gave him a way into their homes. He defined success, and it helped that he also owned a football club, AC Milan. All this the perfect stepping stone for a career in politics in 1994. From a standing start, Berlusconi's created what he believes is an unstoppable force. Berlusconi was Donald Trump 30 years ahead, the orange media man who knew how to connect with the people. His slogan for a new Italian miracle. He even wrote the music. He became prime minister by promising a fresh start, but he also signalled a turbulent past, forming a right-wing coalition that included neo-fascists and using personality politics that harked back to the days of Benito Mussolini. Okay. And while he said he'd stop corruption, he became plagued by it. His first administration came to an end because he was being investigated for bribing tax officials, the news breaking as he was hosting a UN conference on international crime. But he was back in power by 2001, his cabinet becoming the longest serving Italian government since the war. He returned again in 2008, but by the end of that term, Berlusconi was not a fresh face in politics anymore. He wasn't even the same face. But the fresh-faced Prime Minister appeared to have acquired little scars round his ears, above and below his eyes, telltale scars. His extra-long Christmas break seems to have had an uplifting effect. But the headlines weren't just about plastic surgery and what he looked like. It was about what he was doing while inside the Prime Ministerial Palace. In 2013, he was convicted of paying an underage woman for sexual services at one of his infamous Bunga Bunga parties. The verdict was overturned on appeal. But it was tax fraud, the allegations that first dogged him 20 years earlier, that saw him banned from public office for six years in 2013. I committed no crime. He said, I am guilty of nothing. I am innocent. For this reason, I say to all of you, to Italians who are honest, respectable and of good sense, react, protest. Let's hear it. Berlusconi made just as large a mark internationally. The matey minister who cozied up with Tony Blair and George W. Bush, but who didn't offer Angela Merkel the same courtesy, leaving her waiting while he took a phone call. He's insulted her looks and once famously kept her waiting on the red carpet while he was glued to his mobile phone. Hell knows no fury like a German chancellor scorned. That call was with Turkey's Recep Tayyip Erdogan, another one of Berlusconi's buddies, but it was his closeness to Vladimir Putin that raised the most eyebrows. Last year, Berlusconi said that Putin had sent him 20 bottles of vodka and a lovely letter for his birthday. That kind of language didn't help his latest political incarnation. Berlusconi came back on the scene in 2022 in a new coalition with Georgia Maloney as prime minister. While she sought to distance Italy from Russia after the Ukraine invasion, she also knew she owed Silvio so much. He gave her her first government job and made far-right parties like hers have relevance once more. Berlusconi was modern politics and media all in one, a sign of things to come, but he always retained his own distinct populist flair. The question is whether that has left Italian politics and wider politics in a better place.